Epic battles require epic rewards, so let's build some loot. What are we doing today, Tim? So today we're going to make some loot piles, make some little tiny crates, make some piles of coins and gems and jewel stones. Basically, we're just making some scatter terrain for Dungeons and Dragons. Sexy loot that you can win after you've killed, uh, what, I don't know, whatever, and babies. We're going to start off with the trickiest part of this build, and that's the small chests that the loot is going to come with. There's loads of different ways you can tackle this. We've gone for popsicle sticks, and Tim's banding a loads together here with masking tape so we can cut them all at once using a bandsaw. But of course, you can trim these down any way you like, a handsaw or even just some clippers. Either way, you're going to want three measurements of wood. I'm not going to give you any exact figures here because it really just depends on personal taste and how big you'd like these pieces to be. The only thing we will say is that you need two pieces that are going to be two widths of popsicle sticks smaller than the other pieces. Take an X-Acto knife and scratch in some wood grain into the popsicle sticks. Thinking about it, we probably should have just done this to the whole popsicle sticks before we cut them, but you know, hindsight's 2020. A wire brush here will have a similar effect. Once you've got them all cut, you can stick them together with some super glue. Again, cut these and put them together however you like. The only thing we would recommend here is always cut more than you need, because chances are some are going to fray, some might even split, some of them just might not have a very nice wood grain on certain pieces, and for the cost of some popsicle sticks it's always worth making too many so that you can pick the best pieces of wood for the final product. We're making eight of these in total today, four of them are going to have some of these chests on there, and with each one we're going to do something different with the lid. For the one here that still has a hinge lid attached, we're using some one millimeter dowel to create the hinge. For the bases, we're just using some offcuts from another project. But any base here will do fine. GW bases are pretty easy to pick up. Place down the chests in fun, different positions. And then on the other four, we're doing various different sizes of piles of hot glue. As always, whilst using hot glue, we always have to point out that you should never use hot glue because it's crap. We wanted some gear to go along with our treasure, so we raided the bits box. that just some straight up wood stain on the popsicle sticks gave a real nice oaky look. But if you haven't got wood stain to hand or you want to make life difficult for yourself, you can paint these brown and then use something like a strong tone wash from Armour Painter to get into the details from the scratches that we made before. Whilst those dry, let's take a look at the dollar store haul that started this idea in the first place. Right, dollar store haul. Everything's sparkly. Ooh. Is this your new sparkly stuff box this, this then? Is, this yeah. is the sparkly stuff box nice. for sure. <laughs> Thought this looked like raw silver. Raw yeah, gold, like gold nuggets. Nuggets. Yeah. We have some diamonds. And these ones are attached to sort of a rope, but they actually are a little nicer than those, so I thought I could see if I could get some, some off of there. Some jars for another project. Um, probably for another project. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are going to be little tiny jewels, yeah, just the beams. gemstones, mm -hmm. uh, and then this will be our gold coins, mm -hmm. our silver coins. Dollar stores and craft stores are your friend here. Whilst all this stuff might look really specific, we had no trouble finding it and it was all pretty cheap as well. The main thing that's really going to make this build pop are the gold flakes that you can see here. But if you really can't find them anywhere, you're going to be able to substitute them with just regular glitter and still get a pretty decent effect, I think. But yeah, these gold flakes are really going to make this thing pop. Before we add the loot, we're going to clean up the bases a little bit. 
For that, we're using Astro Granite Debris, which is a Citadel texture paint. We're using this because it's doing all the work here for us. It's giving us that nice gray base texture that we can use for caves or dungeons. And there's loads of little bits there that are gonna give us some really interesting texture. But again, this isn't really necessary. You can use some PVA, some sand and some grit and paint over them to get a similar finish. Next, the fun stuff. We're gonna take some five minute epoxy resin and mix it together with a good wedge of the gold flakes. No real ratio here, just mix it up till it looks good and then start placing it around the chests and over the hot glue mounds that we made before. Spend some time with the chest to make it look like the stuff is flowing out of them. And at this point, if you've got any other details like the little beads or the little diamonds here, you can place those on there as well. With the diamonds, be careful with the epoxy resin as if it settles and dries over the top of them they can lose a little bit of their detail. Also we found that with the piles and the stuff coming out of the treasure chest it was good to sprinkle a little bit more of the fleck just over the top of the resin before it dried as well. You can use your finger or the back of a paintbrush to kind of pat it down a little bit so you don't get any obvious flaky bits and just watch with the resin as it will seep a little bit which we had a bit of trouble there with the largest one going right up to the edge of the base. Last thing to do then was to paint the few equipment pieces we found from the bits box and some stuff that Tim had bought from home. We've got a crossbow, a couple of swords and a shield. Not really much to say about this. Tim spent a little bit of time painting them up with greys, browns and metallics. The only thing we will say is try and get this stuff so that it's sticking away from the loot as the silhouette can get a little bit lost when it's really tucked into that shiny gold. And of course you might think that you are limiting yourself in where you can use these with equipment on them. But as Tim pointed out, if you don't want to dish out any new equipment to your players, you can just say that these are decorative swords worth five gold each or something like that. And then you're pretty much done. You've got a selection of loot that you can place down in dungeons, caves, anywhere you want to put it. And they're almost modular. Ransackle a bandit hideout, you might find one of these in the corner. Head into a dragon's cave and you could find a whole pile of them all pushed together to show off the dragon's hall. Really fun one to build this one. Really useful stuff that's going to get on the table in no time. Let us know if you have a go at it yourself. We would love to see your results. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click like. And for lots more terrain builds and other wargaming goodness don't forget to subscribe here at the game chamber